So next we move on to one more type of PMF that you can have once you have uh, random variables and events. Uh, this is called conditional distributions. Okay. So first we look at just one random variable. Okay. So it's a very simple case where if you supposing you have a random variable x that's defined in a probability space and let's say there's an event that's defined a. Okay. One can define something called conditional PMF of x given a. Okay. So this is just a PMF which is uh, q of t. You can denote it q of t. Anything else if you want you can denote it. Basically it's the probability that x equals t given a. Okay. So previously the PMF of x without any conditioning is simply the probability that x equals t. Now if there is an event a with which you want to condition then probability that x equals t given a becomes a conditional PMF uh, conditioned on an occurrence of an event. Okay. So this is this makes sense you can see why uh, this makes sense. Uh, we, we will use this notation x given a for denoting the conditional random variable. You have an unconditioned random variable x. If you want to condition on event a, I will simply say x given a, x uh, bar a, that is the conditional random variable and uh, that would have a distribution which is different from the original random variable. Okay. So how do you compute this fx given a of t? It is basically probability of x equals t given a, that is just probability of intersection of those two events divided by probability of a. Okay. So standard conditioning, nothing changes in the actual uh, equation except that the conditioning has come in. Okay. So this is a general conditioning in terms of an event but even here uh, pay attention to the fact that the range of x given a can be different from range of x okay? because once you condition on a, x may not be able to take many values outside of a. right? So the range can change. Okay? So this, this conditioning makes sense. Uh, sometimes it is used, uh, people do condition on events but it is most popular to condition on events defined by another random variable okay? and that is where the conditional distribution of one random variable given another random variable's value uh, enters the picture. Okay, so it's sort of very similar to the previous picture, except that this event a is now defined using another random variable. Okay, so let's say you have two random variables x and y. These are jointly distributed. They have a joint PMF of x y. The table is given to you. Okay, so remember the table is given to you. I'm going to define something called the conditional PMF of y given x equals t. Okay, so x equals t has occurred. The random variable x has taken a value t. So the event x equals t has occurred. Now, of course, I can define now the conditional random variable y which is conditioned on x equals t and that is exactly the conditional PMF, PMF of that guy. Okay? So basically, it is the probability that y equals t prime given x equals t. Okay? So you can just uh, do this calculation again. This is, this is just an ordinary conditional probability now, right? y equals t prime given x equals t. It is probability of y equals t prime comma x equals t. Remember, uh, comma is and, right? So it is the intersection y equals t prime and x equals t divided by probability that x equals t and notice now what is the numerator? Numerator is the joint PMF fxy of t comma t, t prime and what is the denominator? Denominator is the marginal PMF fx of t. Okay? Now we will use this little notation here, hopefully this notation is clear enough. I will say y given x equals t is the conditional random variable. I okay? will think of that as the conditional random variable itself y given x equals t. Okay? So what is this q of t prime? It is nothing but the distribution of this conditional random variable. right? So we will write it as f y given x equals t of t prime. Okay? So that is a, a very common notation for the conditional random variable. Okay? So what is most important about the conditional random variable is this equation. Okay? So this equation is something that we will use quite a bit when we write down joint PMFs and all that. Okay? So the joint PMF, it's the same thing, it's the same equation that's used in the definition. I've written it a bit differently. Okay. So the joint PMF evaluated at t comma t prime, x equals t, y equals t prime, is simply the product of the conditional PMF of y given x equals t of t prime times fx of t. Okay. Do you see that? It's the same equation, fx of t comes in. Okay. So this is the same uh, product rule that we used when we defined probability of A and B, right? What's probability of A and B? It's probability of A given B times probability of B. The same thing except it's written in the language of conditional PMFs and joint PMFs. That's it. Okay, so this equation is very useful. Uh, quite often, uh, the uh, some of the objects here may be easier to find. Okay, so quite often it's very common that the marginal is easy to find and the conditional is easy to find. Okay, and then you can multiply the two to get the joint. Okay, 
or maybe the other way around but usually the marginal and the conditional are easy, easier slightly to define than the joint directly okay. So, this is a very common uh, trick that is used to get to the joint PMF okay. So, hopefully the definition was clear so now let us uh, check our understanding with some examples. So, here is a, a very simple example okay. So, here is a joint PMF okay. So, notice how the joint PMF and the marginal are given to us okay. So, notice how what this joint PMF is so, from the joint PMF you can identify that the range of x is uh, 0, 1, 2 okay. So, better way to write range of x is this you know I mean x belongs to 0, 1, 2 uh, y belongs to 0, 1 okay and the joint PMF is given you can quickly check that it is all valid you know 1 by 8 appears 4 times that is half 1 by 4 appears twice that is another half it all adds up to 1 and you can do the marginal here you just add up everything in the row you get half you add up everything here you get 1 by 2 you get here 3 by 8 1 by 4 3 by 8 all of these are uh, valid as well okay so everything is fine. So now uh, supposing I want to do the PMF let us say for y given x equals 1 x equals 0 let us take that okay. So, y takes value 0 1 I want to do y given x equals 0 okay. So, this random variable it takes value 0 comma 1 okay and uh, what is f y given x equals 0 of 0 okay. It is f x y of 0 comma 0 divided by f x of 0. Okay, what is f x y of 0 comma 0? It is 1 by 4 and what is f x of 0? That is 3 by 8. So, you get 2 by 3. Okay. What is f y given x equals 0 of 1? It is f x y of 0 comma 1 divided by f x of 0. It is basically 1 by 8, right? 0 comma 1 is 1 by 8 here divided by 3 by 8 you get 1 by 3 okay. So, notice what has happened here to get the conditional PMF you simply divide this column by this number okay. So, you divide the column 1 by 4 1 by 8 by 3 by 8 to get the conditional PMF 2 by 3 1 by 3 okay. So, you divide divide 1 by 4, 1 by 8, by 3 by 8, you get that. So, now uh, if, you, if you want to look at the conditional PMF of y uh, fx, let me let me go to x given y equals 1. Okay, y is 1. So, you have to look at and uh, so if once y is 1, you, you look at, so maybe I should write it in another color. Let me pick another color for you. I'll pick... Uh, this dark green okay. So, this is y equals 1 for you and this is the probability that y equals 1 you divide this by this you are going to get the distribution here right. So, y equals uh, x uh, given this is going to be 0 1 2 and the probability is going to be let me just do it green the probability is going to be 1 by 8 divided by 1 by 2 right. I will write it like that uh, 1 by 8 divided by 1 by 2 and then 1 by 4 divided by 1 by 2 and that is just 1 by 4, 1 by 4 and 1 by 2 ok. You do not have to write it in such uh, great detail you can just directly write if you like 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 2 I got that. So, th so this way you can quickly see how to find the conditional distribution. Any conditional distribution I give you, you identify the row or the column and simply take that divide by the marginal that comes below it that is it that gives you the conditional PMF ok. Very very easy and straightforward way to find conditional PMF ok. So, let us do one more example to convince ourselves that we have understood this here is the example we want to do. So, here is a joint PMF that has been given to us ok. You can check that this is a valid PMF very quickly you can just add 1 plus 3 4. 7, 5, 12, yeah. So, this is a valid PMF, it adds up to 1, okay. So, here the marginals have not been given and uh, you have to just keep computing some of the conditionals. So, let us look at this. 
So here, uh, first step is to compute the marginal, right? So if you add up these two, you get 4 by 12, which is 1 by 3. Here you get 3 by 12, which is 1 by 4. Here you get 5 by 12. Okay, so here again, if you add, you get 1 by 2, 1 by 6, 1 by 3. Okay, so those are the marginals, that's okay. So now, if I want to find uh, y is, so the range of y, so remember x takes value 0, 1, 2 and y takes value 0, 1, 2. Okay. Now, if I want to find x given y equals, or let me start with y given, okay, y given, let us say we do y given x equals uh, 0. Okay. So, this guy, okay, so this is uh, this divided by this guy, right? This is going to be 0, 1, 2 and the probability is going to be 1 by 6, 1 by 3 and 1 by 2, isn't it? Do you see that? Okay, so you take, see x is 0, so I know I have to focus on this column alone. If I take this vector in the joint PMF, divide by the marginal, I am going to get the distribution. So notice how y given x equals 1 is going to change. Okay, so if you say y given x equal to 1, you see there is a 0 there. The moment there is a 0 there, you do not want to include it in the range and put a probability 0. So you drop it. So you just say 1 comma 2, okay, 1 by 12 and 1 by 12 and the probability is total is 1 by 6. Notice the total does not matter when these two are equal. I know ahead of time that this is going to be half, this is going to be half, right? Anyway, but you can also divide and check that that works out. Uh, similarly, you can do y given x equals 2 and that is going to be, so notice the way I am writing it, I, I write the values taken below and the probability above, okay. So this, you can use any such simple notation. So, so given x is 2, uh, maybe I should do a different color here. So let me just do a different color to be uh, very clear on what is going on. So, supposing you look at y given x equals 2, okay, so I am looking at this column and then I am going to divide by this quantity here, that is going to be 0 comma 2, I do not have to write the 0 explicitly, right, because that is going to take a probability 0 there, why, why do that, okay. So, you will get a 3 by 4 and a 1 by 4. Okay, so notice how you are getting different, different marginals, you know, I mean joint PMF for something and then depending on how the matrix is, you will get different, different marginals, all of it uh, is interesting. So let us also do a couple of cases row wise, so let me just do x given, I will do a different color, maybe blue, okay. Uh, so let us look at x given y equals 1, so y is 1, so you are focusing on this uh, row here and this guy here, this is going to be uh, 0 and 1, okay, it does not take the value 2 because that is already 0 and then if you do 4, you are going to get 2 by 3, 1 by 3, okay. So notice all the different probabilities that you are getting between all sorts of distributions, 1, 2, 0, 2, 0, 1, 2 by 3, 1 by 3, 3 by 4, 1 by 4, half, half, all of these end up happening once you go to the conditionals, okay. And in every case, you can check the equality, okay. Remember to check this equality. It is always true that fxy of uh, t1, t2 equals f, uh, maybe I should start from the left side and right. This is an important little equality for you to know. fxy of t1, t2 is always equal to fy given x equals t1. Uh, of t2 times fx of t1 and it is also equal to f x given y equals t2 of t1 times fy of t2. So this is always satisfied, okay, so I should remember this identity is very, very, very important. You can check in all our calculations can check that that holds. I mean, this is how we just calculate it. It is sort of trivial in some sense, but it is important to note all these, these identities will be very, very useful. So, somebody gives you a table, some partial information, 
about uh, you know conditional PMF is given, this is given, or some conditional PMFs are given, some marginals are given, some actual joint PMFs are given, you should be able to calculate all the missing values using these identities. Okay. Uh, one more thing I want to point out, which uh, I think maybe is uh, was not very, very clear. So notice here, the y given x equals 0 is actually sort of a random variable and it has a PMF. So if you keep x fixed and vary the values of y, right, you will get 1. Okay, so if you add up all these guys, you'll get 1. 1 by 6 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 2 is 1. 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is 1. 3 by 4 plus 3 by 1 by 4 is 1, right. So every conditional uh, random variable is actually a full-blown random variable. So, so it's a valid PMF. So if you do this, right, if you take sum over f y given x equals t of t prime and add it over all y, okay, you will get 1. Okay, so this is also an important identity to remember. Okay, so the conditional PMF is a valid PMF on its own. So you add up over all the range. In fact, it may not be the entire range. It may be something smaller than y also. But anyway, let's add it over the entire range. Maybe some of the values will be 0. It doesn't matter. You add up the conditional PMF over the entire range of y, you will get 1. So this property is also very important when you solve problems. Okay, so, so the conditional PMF is a valid PMF on its own. It will take uh, probabilities and you add up all the probabilities, you'll get 0. You'll get 1. Sorry, add up all the probabilities, you'll get 1. Remember, x equals t is fixed here. Okay, so you can't keep changing x. Okay, uh, so x, x equal to t has to be fixed. It has to be one conditional random variable. Then it's PMF when you vary y alone, y given x. When you keep x fixed and vary y and you look at y given x, that will give you 1. Okay, so that's an important identity to remember. Okay, so I think I've covered most of the things. You can check all these things. It's uh, useful to know. Okay, so uh, I have a few examples to show you. Maybe uh, this is a good point in the lecture to break and then come back and see the next lecture. Thank you very much.